This is Basho Matsuyo Basho, Japanese haiku poet, The Narrow Road to the Deep North, and other travel sketches. The beginning of the narrow road. The narrow road to the deep north, days and months are travelers of eternity. So are the years that pass by. Those who steer a boat across the sea or drive a horse over the earth till they succumb to the weight of years spend every minute of their lives traveling. There are a great number of ancients who died on the road. I myself have been tempted for a long time by the cloud-moving wind, filled with a strong desire to wander. It was only towards the end of last autumn that I returned from rambling along the coast. I barely had time to sweep the cobwebs from my broken house on the river, Sumida, before the new year. But no sooner had the spring mist begun to rise over the fields that I wanted to be on the road again to cross the barrier gate of Surakawa in due time, the gods seemed to have possessed my soul and turned it inside out, and roadside images seemed to invite me from every corner so that I, it was impossible for me to stay idle at home. Even while I was getting ready, mending my torn trousers, tying a new strap to my hat, and applying moxa, to my legs to strengthen them. I was already dreaming of the full moon rising over the islands of Matsushima. I think we heard that Well, not really. Finally, I sold my house, moving to the cottage of Sampu for a temporary stay. Upon the threshold of my old home, however, I wrote a linked verse of eight pieces and hung it on a wooden pillar. The starting piece was Behind this door, now buried in deep grass, a different generation will celebrate the festival of dolls. It was early on the morning of March the 27th that I took to the road. There was darkness lingering in the sky and the moon was still visible. Though gradually thinning away, the faint shadow of Mount Fuji and the cherry blossoms of Uno and Yanaka were bidding me a last farewell. My friends had got together the night before, and they all came with me on the boat to keep me company for the first few miles. When we got off the boat at Senju, however, the thought of the 3,000 miles before me suddenly filled my heart. Neither the houses of the town nor the faces of the... He tells with the boat again. He tells his friends farewell. You remember the, how he, the metaphor he was using, right? Uh, with the... Ends with the boat? Yeah, and he gets into the boat uh, at the very end also. And uh, how painful it is uh, to leave his friends behind. He's expensive. And uh, he compares the, the embraces and uh, somehow like those under the sea, those cups with the legs uh, holding it together. So they, it begins with him in the, taking the boat to, uh, across uh, to the land of Japan. There are probably a lot of places you got to take a boat. Mm -hmm. He writes his poem, The Passing Spring. Mm -hmm. Birds mourn, fishes weep with tearful eyes. With this poem to commemorate my departure, I walked forth on my journey. But lingering thoughts made my steps heavy. My friends stood in a line and waved goodbye as long as they could see my back. They continued waving after he had 
left. So long as they could see his back. I walked all through that day, ever wishing to return after seeing the strange sights of the far north, but not really believing in the possibility, for I knew that departing like this on a long journey in the second year of Kenroku, I should only accumulate more frosty hairs on my head as I approached the colder regions. When I reached the village of Soka in the evening, my bony shoulders were worn because of the load I had carried, which consisted of a paper coat to keep me warm at night, a white cotton gown to wear after the bath, scanty protection from the rain, writing equipment, and gifts for certain friends of mine. I wanted to travel light, of course, but there were always certain things I could not throw away for either practical or sentimental reasons. I went to see the shrine of Muro Nariyasima. According to Sora, my companion, this shrine is dedicated to the goddess called Lady of Flower-Bearing flower Trees, who has another shrine at the foot of Mount Fuji. This goddess is said to have locked herself up in a burning cell to prove the divine nature of her newly conceived son when her husband doubted it. As a result, her son was named the Lord born out of the fire, and her shrine, Muro no Yashima, which means a burning cell. It was the custom of this place for poets to sing of the rising smoke and for ordinary people not to eat ko, kono shiro, a speckled fish which has a vile smell when burnt. I lodged in an inn at the foot of Mount Nico on the night of March the 30th. The host of the inn introduced himself as Honest Go Zeman and told me to sleep in perfect peace upon his grass pillow, for his sole ambition was to be worthy of his name. I watched him rather carefully, but found him almost stubbornly honest, utterly devoid of worldly cleverness. It was as if the merciful Buddha himself had taken the shape of a man to help me in my wandering pilgrimage. Indeed, such saintly honesty and purity as his must not be scorned, for it verges closely on the perfection preached by Confucius. On the first day of April, I climbed Mount Nico to do homage to the holiest of the shrines upon it. This mountain used to be called Nico. When the high priest Kuke built a temple upon it, however, he changed the name to Nico which means the brightest, bright beams of the sun. Kuke must have had the power to see a thousand years into the future, for the mountain is now the seat of the most sacred of all shrines, and is its beneficial power prevails throughout the land, embracing the entire people like the bright beams of the sun. To say more about the shrine would be to violate its holiness. Home. It was with awe that I held fresh leaves, green leaves, bright in the sun. Mount Kurokami was visible through the mist in the distance. It was brilliantly white and with snow in spite of its name, which means black hair. Poem. Rid of my hair, I came to Mount Kurokami. On the day we put on clean summer clothes. My companion's real name is Kawai Sogoro, or Sora, being his pen name. He used to live in my neighborhood and help me in such chores as bringing water and firewood. 
he wanted to view this he wanted to enjoy the views of Matsushima and Kisagata with me and also to share with me the hardships of the wandering journey. So he took to the road after taking the tonsure on the very morning of our departure, putting on the black robe of an interate, interneret priest and even changing his name to Sogo, which means religiously enlightened. His poem, therefore, is not intended as a mere description of Mount Kurokami. The last two lines in particular impress us deeply, for they express his determination to persist in his purpose. After climbing 200 yards or so from the shrine, I came to a waterfall which came pouring out of a hollow in the ridge and tumbled down into the dark green pool below in a huge leap of several hundred feet. The rocks of the waterfall were so carved out that we could see it from behind. Though hidden uh, ourselves in a craggy cave, hence its nickname, See From Behind. Poem. Silent a while in a cave, I watched a waterfall for the first of the summer observances. A friend was living in the town of Kurobani in the province of Nasu. There was a wide expanse of grass moor. And the town was on the other side of it. I decided to follow a shortcut which ran straight for miles and miles across the moor. I noticed a small village in the distance, but before I reached it, rain began to fall and darkness closed in. I put up at a solitary farmer's house for the night. Started again early next morning. As I was plodding through the grass, I noticed a horse grazing by the roadside and a farmer cutting grass with a sickle. I asked him to do me the favor of lending me his horse. The farmer hesitated for a while, but finally with a touch of sympathy in his face, he said to me, there are hundreds of crossroads in the grass moor. A stranger like you can easily go astray. This horse knows the way. You can send him back when he won't go any further. So I mounted the horse and started off when two small children came running after me. One of them was a girl named Kasani, which means manifold. I thought her name was somewhat strange, but exceptionally beautiful. Poem. If your name, Kasani, means manifold, how befitting it is also for a double-flowered pink written by Sora. Bye and bye. What? I probably read it, but didn't record it. Huh? Maybe uh, we're going to be done and we can... By and by, I came to a small village. I therefore sent back the horse with a small amount of money tied to the saddle. All right. Uh, I think... Uh, I enjoy reading them again. You heard this one, huh?